Hey y'all, welcome back to Andy's Little Homestead. Today, we're gonna run some sketchy ass homemade power lines. We gotta have some kind of power for the camper, but the problem is, the camper's over there, and the well's over there. And ideally, we need to be able to start power from inside the camper to run the well to get water to the camper. So we've got a generator that's got a remote start that's gonna be sitting up there. And if all goes well, when we're done, we'll be able to press a button turn on the water in the camper. Now originally I was planning on building an attachment to actually trench the water line all the way through, but I think we can do it cheaper by running it through the sky. I should mention, I've never run power lines before. So we're just gonna make this up as we go. So after some highly complex calculations and survey work, I figure I can, uh, it's a straight line from here to there. So we'll start right here. That ought to be deep enough. All right, so we got a total of five holes dug because five is the number of poles that I have. We got some 20 footers there and a couple 16s. Figure as long as they're tall enough to where the wires can't, you know, hit a tractor and kill somebody, it's probably fine. So I figure while these are still on the ground, what we'll do is we'll install like a crossbar so that the wires ain't touching each other. They gotta be far enough away to where a big swing and wind don't make them smack into each other, make a bunch of fireworks unintentionally. So we're gonna put a bar across the top, put insulators on it. Got this pile of oak cutoffs here from uh, my fence posts that were originally made out of pallets. So we'll take a couple of those and make it happen. All right, so we got our crossbars on. Put two GRKs in them. That's probably enough. And then when I rolled this one over, I saw a little rotten section on the bottom. So we'll cut that off, but that one can be right there by the well. And then the wires will go up and I probably won't hit it with anything. Turn myself into, into barbecue. So, so we'll do that. <laughs> There we go. As you can see, we got two separate types of insulators. I've got the larger porcelain ones on the uh, ones that are going to be, be nye, nye, on the ones that are going to be on the end because they're going to be taking more tension, which really is just the weight of the wire. And in the middle, we've got these other electric fence insulators that are nice because I'll be able to spool the wire out and then like slip it in there and it should stay. Because there is going to be a little bit of tension on there, I intentionally put the crossbar with the insulators pointing this way. That way it's pulling against it and not against the hardware which may not even matter because it's still pulling against the hardware on the insulator I, I don't know i'm just making it up y'all so let's start sinking our poles in some holes i uh i just dropped it so we'll, we'll be right back Normally in a situation like this, I'd have my wife help me find the hole, but I uh, managed to get it myself this time, so it's a good day. Well, I am not sure how I'm going to twist that the right direction. Figured it out. You know, it's a common enough problem. I don't think that went in as deep as I wanted it to, but I only have so much to work with, so it'll probably be fine. So we'll go ahead and set the rest of these. All right, well, those are kind of pretty straight-ish. It's good enough for who it's for. I did have to stick one right there in the middle of the garden. Ran over a pumpkin seedling. I feel pretty bad about that. That's okay though. And of course, to get the tractor in, I had to drop the fence wire because some genius who designed this system didn't put a gate in. So tighten this back up, start stringing some wire. All right, we've got our wire set up on our D Spoolinator 5000. We're using 10 gauge bare copper to make this run. And we're here to the original reason that I did this instead of burying it. Uh, this is 800 feet of it. We got about a 400 foot run and that roll of wire cost $274. The type UF wire, if I were to bury it, the stuff that I need to do that is just under $2 a foot. So doing it this way is cheaper even if it didn't, you know, right. That's okay. Ain't nobody gonna get electrocuted up there. 
I am a lineman for the county and I drive the main road searching in the sun for another overload I hear you singing in the wire I can hear you through the wine and the Wichita lineman is still on the line. I am about eight feet short. I reckon we can steal the ground wire off of this one. All right, so it's been like I don't know probably two hours and i lost my camera and i just found it right over there in the grass which is fun but basically we got it all finished up scabbed in that little bit of ground wire over to there and then i ran it to this uf cable that goes down to a plug so when i plug this into the generator it should send 240 volts about 400 feet that way and if it works how i hope it's gonna work we won't have any fireworks and water will come out of those sprinklers that should be a good time I'm really hoping for the best on this one, so we'll see what happens. I'm going to move this so that I'm not standing directly under the wires. Just in case they spontaneously and rapidly disassemble themselves. Don't buy that generator. It sucks. Y'all, I really had high hopes for this generator because it's dual fuel and electric start. And, you know, I can run propane on it. And it's been kind of disappointing. Meanwhile, I don't think I've ever changed the oil on the Harbor Freight generator and it just keeps on going. And that's not a sponsored statement. But if anybody from Harbor Freight wants to send me one of the nice big dual fuel ones that they got, um, I'm not too good to say yes to that kind of thing. And just so y'all know that this isn't a shameless plug for anybody, uh, you never send a crappy Chinese generator to do a good Chinese generator's job. If you're nervous about doing sketchy electrical things, just remember, uh, think breakers exist and they probably work. So uh, nothing bad's probably gonna happen. Y'all, I can't believe it. That worked on the first try. And nothing appears to be frying or arcing or making fireworks. Nothing's been electrocuted yet. It's a good day. All right, y'all, I'll let it run for about 15 minutes just to make sure I wasn't premature with my uh, excitement. But she's working good. A couple quick design notes. Uh, that was 10 gauge wire up top there because over that 400 and just over 400 foot run, 12 gauge was enough to run 240 just based on a chart I found on the interwebs. But I figured it was worth going up just a little bit. You may be confused as to why there's only two wires up there. Uh, apparently 240 doesn't have a return. They alternate back and forth and phases and something. I don't freaking know, man. None of it makes sense to me. Y'all can explain it if you want, but you're gonna have to do it like I'm five. But basically 120, 120 is 240, there it goes. And one might argue that it would have been safer to direct bury it but i dig a lot of holes i'm more likely to cut the wire with a shovel with it down there than i am up there and the tractor fits under it so it doesn't matter but y'all i'm happy with this project it's another step forward i don't know how many building codes were violated in the making of this video but uh, do me a favor and mind your own business as always i hope y'all enjoyed and i hope you learned something i love you and god bless y'all are talking about there ain't nothing sketchy about that whole setup it's good man if this was california you, you could power 1.2 million electric cars on it i guarantee it